there's an old saying that says, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And Hyundai have done pretty much that with the i30 sedan in since it was introduced a few years ago. But here in 2024, they've made a few updates. They've done a bit of design to the outside of the car. Um, they've added a few more features on the inside. They've added a cool feature called Blue Link, so you can remotely start your car and do other bits and pieces. Um, so they've kind of brought it into a little bit more of a modern era, but they've not changed the original recipe of the car. Um, you know, a two litre turbo engine, manual automatic gearboxes, lots of theater and pops and crackles from the exhaust, inexpensive, it's less than $60,000 on the road. And it kind of sits in its own little niche. There's not many other small to sort of medium sized stands with this much performance, uh, this much equipment as standard for that sort of money. If you want something kind of similar, you've got to go to something like an Audi S3 sedan or something similar. And then obviously you're talking a lot more money. So in today's video, we're going to have a look at this updated 2024 Hyundai i30 sedan N. Uh, look at some of the features have changed on the outside, a couple of the new sort of techie bits, uh, and then obviously take it for a drive. So settle down and join me for this video. So starting off at the front of the car then, the whole front bumper has been redesigned as have the front headlights. Um, it's actually a much more modern sort of looking car and it looks a little bit more expensive than the previous model. Um, the front on the previous model still looked sort of fairly plasticky. Um, so I think this is a little bit more modern looking and also, like I say, looks a little bit more expensive. They've also changed things like the badges as well. The old ones were chrome um, and kind of raised profile to them, where these are sort of flat and like a matte black finish, um, which I actually quite like. I think it suits the car. And on this performance blue color, obviously stands out really, really well. Um, so yeah, I like the overall sort of new design of this car. I like the fact they've kept sort of the red lip around the bottom of the car, uh, just to sort of give that sporty look. Um, so yeah, as an overall design, I think it looks fantastic. So the back of the car has changed a little bit as well. The rear section down here has got this matte black finish as well. Um, and it's also a slightly different design in terms of the angles and that sort of thing too. Uh, rear spoiler still stands. Badges have changed to black, so it's cool to see that matching the front ones. But one of the major changes on the outside is these new forged alloy wheels. They're designed to mimic the same wheels as you get on the i30N hatch. Uh, but they're painted in black this time, but they also save weight. I mean, you've got less unsprung weight on the car, which improves handling, um, but also looks nicer and a bit more modern than the previous design as well. Um, so externally, I think the update on the, this new uh, i30 sedan N is much better than the previous model. I have to say the one area where I'm really disappointed in this new sedan N is the key. The key on the older model was quite nice. It had sort of bits of chrome and actually look quite nice, but this looks really cheap. It's almost like the key you'd find on like a base model, just with an end leg on the back. It just, yeah, it just looks like something really cheap you'd buy off of eBay or something like that. You think for a car split costing nearly $60,000, you'd actually have a nice key. It just seems really kind of cheap. Um, but yeah, it's a minor sort of gripe if you like. Uh, boot size hasn't changed from the old model. It's just under, just over 450 liters. The only downside to this is you've got the big strut brace uh, in the back of the boot, which obviously helps uh, rigidity for the back of the car. But also when you fold the back seat down, it's one piece, so you can't really get too much stuff through that gap in the middle of the strut brace, and you can't really carry passengers if you want to carry longer items in the back of the boot. So there are some restrictions to the carrying capacity to the to this sedan model. And one thing that the i30N hatch and also the sedan are really well known for is that the exhaust makes an awesome noise. So I think we should actually test that out next, just to remind ourselves of what it sounds like. Brings out the child and everybody. Reminds me when I was 20, in my early 20s, and had a hot hatch and loved the sound of the exhaust. And this thing is the best sounding exhaust on the market, I reckon. Too many cars have been having filters put on them nowadays, which make them really boring. This is definitely kind of old school, if you like. I love the fact that Hyundai can still get away with this. Um, it makes just for such an entertaining car to drive. Um, and just, yeah, it's addictive. Um, so yeah, one of the best features on the car is the exhaust. 
Uh, so we're going to have a look inside the car now. Um, I'll show you a little bit about some of the new features that you now get on this model. Um, it's not really changed much from the outgoing car, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, there are a couple of little gripey bits which I don't like, um, but I'll show you around those too. Um, but if you're enjoying the video, give it a like and share it with your friends. Uh, subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell to find out the next time uh, a new car review goes live. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the inside. Alright, so coming to the inside then, there's a little sticker here on the window which says Blue Link. Uh, that relates to an app you can get on your phone. Uh, and you can do things like remote start your car, turn in your aircon, etc, etc. It's really, really good. Uh, a lot of car manufacturers are doing it, so it's good to see here and they jump on board. Uh, anyway, interior-wise, hasn't really changed, as I said, from the last model. So you still get these super comfy leather sports seats, uh, which are fully electric, uh, and also have memory buttons there on the driver's door. Uh, we get a decent sound system from Bose. Uh, which is very, very good. The seats are also heated and ventilated as well, uh, which is fantastic for a car that only cost $57,000. So, as we jump in, it brings the seat back to my position where I had it sat before I got out of the car. And then we push the start button just to the left and we bring everything into life. So in front of us, we've got this lovely leather steering wheel. We've got the two blue end buttons, uh, the end mode over there, which you can obviously Put it into end mode or use one of the custom modes uh, and the same for this one over here as well we've got the ngs the end grin shift button so it gives us a boost of power for 20 seconds uh, to give us maximum power whilst we're driving uh, and the hyundai badge is now black as per the badges on the outside of the car in terms of the steering wheel itself buttons haven't really changed we've got the things like the phone the volume over this side still only got standard cruise control um, which is really frustrating because other countries get adaptive cruise control, which we miss out on, uh, so that's a real shame. Display in front of the driver, again, hasn't changed, still digital, uh, still does a really good job uh, of giving you all the information that you need. The nice thing that it does do is that it changes when you change the drive mode of the car. Uh, so here we are in standard at the minute. Uh, so if you flick that over to sport, everything flashes red. Uh, the dials have got this red sort of uh, outer side, outer sort of... Um, colouring which is quite cool so yeah it just gives you the uh, intent that this car is now in go fast mode um, if we look at the larger screen over here uh, in the centre the infotainment screen again decent size nothing's really changed from the previous model it's got Apple CarPlay it's got Android Auto but you still have to use a cable come on Hyundai when are you going to give us wireless Apple CarPlay uh, apparently it's coming in an over the air software update but not too sure when that's occurring um, I mentioned Blue Link earlier, that's there on the screen now, so you can actually pair your phone up to your car. Um, so that's really cool. I'm going to say it's, uh, it's nice that you can do things like remote start your engine, lock and unlock your doors, uh, and that type of thing as well. Uh, still nice to see all the physical buttons here for some of the functions, uh, like your nav and your radio. Uh, and then we've got the dual zone climate control down here as well. Uh, we've also got heated and cooled front seats for the driver and passenger, also a heated steering wheel which again is amazing for a car that only costs $57,000. So the equipment level is actually really good on this car. Uh, the only option you can get, which this one hasn't got, is a sunroof uh, for an extra $2,000. Uh, but yeah, interior wise, it's pretty much the same as what we had before. Uh, so you can't really complain um, for the money. And also this is a fantastic performance sedan. So that's a bit about the front of the interior. Um, say nothing's really changed about the car. Let's go and have a look in the back uh, and see just how much space we've got. <clears throat> so getting inside the back of this i30 sedan in, uh, no different from the previous model to be honest. Um, you have to duck your head a little bit so you don't whack your head on the door sill. There's a fairly decent amount of visibility out the side window. Leg space is plentiful, uh, heaps of uh, room to move your legs around. Uh, the only downside is you can't really fit your feet under the driver's seat which is strange because the driver's seat sits a little bit higher than you'd expect for a car of this type. Um, you'd imagine the car, you know, the seat to sit a little bit lower so you feel a bit more connected with the car when you're driving. Um, but you do sort of feel slightly higher uh, than you probably would expect. Um, I think some of that is because the seat's electric and also you've got the motors underneath the seat to do with the moving. Um, but other than that, yeah, plenty of legroom in the back. Uh, it's nice to see rear air vents and we've also got two 
USB-C fast charging points. Other amenities are the fixing points for an ISOFIX child seat, but we do lack a fold down centre armrest, which is a bit of a disappointment. Um, most cars I've been in these days have the armrest with the cup holders built in, um, which is a shame really, because this is a decent sized family car. You definitely fit two adults in the back, um, which again, most people want to drink or take a bottle with them. Uh, so it is a bit of a, a strange omission from Hyundai. You've got sort of door pockets here in either door, but they're not particularly deep and you can't really get much in there. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a bit of a strange one to be honest. Um, visibility is pretty good, headroom is pretty decent as well, and it doesn't feel too claustrophobic even though you've got this black headlining, um, which you can actually create more light if you have the optional $2,000 sunroof. Uh, but yeah, space in the back, not too bad. So this is always my favourite part of doing a review of an i30N uh, or any end product from Hyundai. Um, is the drive obviously um, it's just one of those cars that kind of just it kind of does a bit of everything it can be fairly sedate when you want it to be um, but if you just want to go and have some fun attack some corners uh, it does that really really well too um, so it is a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde car so it's going to take you for a drive the thing that continues to amaze me with this car is you get all this equipment, you get this fantastic engine, you get this great driving experience, yet it's only $57,000 here in Victoria. Um, it does seem a bit of a performance bargain, to be honest, because, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if a sedan is your thing and you want something which is a little bit quicker than normal, you're looking at something like an Audi S3 or something like that, which is a lot more expensive than this, and you probably wouldn't have quite as much fun, I don't think. It would be a bit more refined, obviously, because it's an Audi. But yeah, it's just like you're spending all that money, but you're just not getting the theatre and the fun that you're getting from this i30 sedan in. Now, I mentioned earlier some of the changes they've made to the outside of the car, but they've also made some really important changes that you can't actually see, and that's to the suspension. So they've made some revisions to it in terms of like the dampers and uh, other bits and pieces. And from memory, I actually think this rides better than the previous model. It certainly feels a bit more compliant when you're just driving around normally. It doesn't feel sort of overly firm. So it's actually a nice com compromise between sort of too soft and too hard. Uh, I think they've actually damped it really, really well. Because Hyundai are well known for sort of tuning their cars for Australian roads. So it feels like they put extra effort into this sedan model uh, to make it a little bit more comfortable. They've added some more safety stuff as well. So you've got all these like traffic sign recognitions and bits and pieces like that. But it's actually really annoying because it turns on every time you get in the car. And if you want to turn it off like you can, obviously in lots of cars, you've got to delve deep into the settings menus and try and find the button to actually turn it off, which is really annoying. Um, because yeah, you've only got to go like 2Ks over the speed limits, beeping at you, and yeah, just a little bit tedious after a while. The good thing about it though is you can, there's a favourite button on the steering wheel, so you can actually program the favourite button to go directly into the driver assist settings, so it's a slightly quicker method uh, of turning that system off. Um, but you still gotta do it every time you get in the car, which is annoying. There's still some bits and pieces I'd like to see in this car, like things like the wireless Apple CarPlay. With the headlights, they're LED, but they haven't, they're not the Matrix LED headlights. Um, I know it's only $57,000, but even if it was slightly more expensive, it would be nice to see things like Matrix headlights, um, wireless CarPlay, and maybe one or two other bits and pieces. I actually had quite a lot of fun in the week I spent with this car because it is one of those like I mentioned earlier kind of a bit of a do everything car it is a lot of fun but you can just use it on your daily commute as well the only downside when you're driving along is the tyres are quite noisy it's got Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's and obviously they're designed for you know maximum grip and having fun 
know, attacking a twisty corner or going on a track day. And they were a good tyre. I like Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. But I just got a little bit of road noise coming through. So whether you know, it's something here and they could address with a little bit more soundproofing in the car, uh, I don't know. But it's the only thing that kind of detracts from the driving experience, really. So I mentioned earlier about this suspension upgrade they've done to the car. And even in end mode, with the suspension on its firmest setting, it's still not that uncomfortable, to be honest. It's still pretty compliant. Um, so they've done a fantastic job of making it a much more usable daily car. It's nice, actually, because it's one of those cars that you find an excuse to go for a drive. And as cars get more surgical these days and filters and everything is going electric it's nice to have something that still feels a little bit analog so you've got to praise Hyundai for still making this car because in a few years time it probably won't be it'll be gone and we'll be stuck with electric cars and hybrids and all the sort of boring stuff that we've now come to expect from a lot of manufacturers So if this is your sort of car, you want something a bit fun, don't want to spend heaps and heaps of money, you can't really go far wrong with this. And they've updated it in 2024 to make it a bit more modern, a bit more, you know, a bit more luxurious, a few more features, but still got that DNA that this car's always had in terms of having fun and lots of theater. So if you've got a spare, 57,000 odd dollars burning a hole in your pocket yeah do yourself a favor and buy one of these you really can't go wrong so there you have it then that is the updated 2024 hyundai i30 sedan n um, i think i've made some really great improvements to this car not only in the way it looks but also in the way it drives and also some extra standard equipment at 57,000 dollars i think it's a bit of a performance bargain so there you are that's my thoughts and opinions Give the video a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that notification bell. If you've got questions about this car, leave them in the comment section for me below, and I'll answer them for you as soon as I can. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you very, very soon in a new video.